This is a 2013 Lexus GS350. It's a pretty nice looking car, especially from the front. We'll take a nice side view. And a rear view. Under the hood we get a 3.5 liter V6 engine putting out 306 horsepower. The factory claims a 0 to 60 time in 5.6 seconds which is pretty close to what I got. Gas mileage is rated at 19 to 27 which is pretty close to what I'm getting. Right now I'm doing very heavy city driving and in heavy city traffic I'm getting around 19. The Lexus cabin has some good features and we can start with this gauge cluster here. Large, easy to read, lots of useful information. I might mention the steering wheel. One of my biggest complaints on Japanese cars in general is the tilt wheel always goes down quite a ways but rarely moves up much. Not a problem here. It goes down all the way, up all the way, so if you're a tall driver or a short driver, you can adjust for your driving position. The buttons on the wheel are useful and easy to use too. Over here we have the information display which is controlled by this stick. As a rule I don't like these things but I have to admit the one here is very easy to use. Destination information, setup, radio, media, climate, phone. Far far easier to use when compared to the high-tech German cars because the systems they use is just a pain in the butt. This is very easy to use, very enjoyable to use and Lexus did a good job here. Another button you might be interested in is the driving mode. You got Eco, Push for Normal, or you also have a Sport mode. Hit it once, you get a sport your shifting characteristics. Hit it twice, it pumps up the shocks for better handling. While I did notice better handling in the Sport mode, I did notice also that whether in the Sport mode or Normal mode, ride comfort was about the same. Something I'll talk about a little bit later. But this is a useful system for sporty driving. There's one feature about the interior I didn't care for. We'll deal with that right now. It has to do with the inside door panel. I don't know about you, but when I'm driving, I like to rest my elbow on the top panel, which you can do with most cars. Can't do that on this Lexus here because the top is too thin, tapered too much. And if you get down to the armrest, instead of squared, it's tapered. So instead of an armrest, we have an arm slide. Basically, this is a very poor design. I'm told it was designed in Japan. I think somebody was drinking too much rice wine that day. I didn't really care for this. But it's a minor complaint. Maybe you can live with it. While the GS has a large glove box, there isn't much room inside. And this is the culprit. This monster boat anchor sized owner's manual system. Ordinarily, I'd put this in the trunk. However, it appears the store panel is actually good for something because the manual fits right down in there. And if you take this tray out, you now have a very large glove box. You probably fit about a dozen burritos in there. Just a little tip for Lexus GS350 owners. Here's another tip for you. On the door panel, it states clearly that the tire pressure should be 35 PSI in front and 36 PSI in the rear. As a rule, I drive cars set to the specs because I figure the engineers know more about the car than I do. Although with this door panel design, we prove that isn't always correct. In any case, driving the car set at these pressures, the ride was way too stiff. Very, very uncomfortable. And I did think that 35, 36 sounded a bit high to me. So I lowered the tire pressures down to 31 front, 32 rear. Big, big improvement. Now the car is very comfortable to drive and did not lose any handling ability at all. So if you own one of these, you might lower the tire pressures and I think you'll see a big difference. Another tip from me to you. The cornering ability of the Lexus is pretty good, whether it's in the sport mode or not. 
the brake pedal feel is nice and firm and the brakes are very responsive. Ran over that big pothole but it was still comfortable since I let the air out of those tires. Acceleration is excellent. tracks, just a slight bump. And with the transmission and the sport note, it likes to stay in low gears for best acceleration. Overall, this is a very pleasant car to drive and has an excellent driving position as well. This is the town of Cave Creek, one of the biggest tourist traps in Arizona. Also one of the biggest speed traps in Arizona. But we're coming up here because there are a lot of nice twisty roads outside of town. It will give us an opportunity to try out this Lexus suspension that costs so much. got this car pumped up with the sport suspension on. So equipped, the handling is excellent. The brakes are nice and firm too. The Lexus 350 isn't cheap. It starts at $46,900. On this one we got $500 for a blind spot monitor system, $1,700 for a dynamic handling system, $500 for park assist, and a whopping $56,90 for the F Sport package, which is way too long to read here. I thought it kind of interesting that they charged an extra $64 for a cargo mat and $105 for a trunk mat. I think at the total $58,069, you'd think that would be standard equipment, but that's not to be. If you're interested in an upgraded sedan and you don't want to go the German car route, the Lexus GS350 is a pretty good alternative. I went out in the desert today and caught myself an Arizona field mouse. Look at the size of this thing. Almost as big as a dog. I had to put a collar on him to keep him from getting away. <laughs> 